Welcome, Spartans, to Podcast Evolved, your favorite Halo podcast. I'm your host today, David, and with me is Aaron. Hello. And Krista Brown. Hello. Yay, everybody. Okay, so today's episode is a book club, which you should know by the title of the episode. It's kind of self-explanatory what's going on. Um, so we're going to do Oasis. So Oasis is a short story by Tobias Bucknell. Uh, Buckle? Buckle? Bucknell? I think I spelled it uh, right. Bukel, oh, no. I think they pronounce it on the audiobooks. Bukel. Excellent, Bukel. Okay. I believe. Nailed it. If he's listening, I'm sorry. You can slag me about it later. <laughs> <laughs> so our publisher is Gallery Books, and it is the original publishing. So this is a... Sorry, I should have did a proper intro. Oasis is a short story that is contained within Halo Fractures, colon, Extraordinary Tales from Halo Cannon. I don't really need to put the whole title in there because it's really big. So Halo Fractures is a book that came out in 2016, roughly around September 20th, uh, depending on your region. So um, it was a pretty cool collection of short stories, and one of them is Oasis. Um, so this kind of leads off, interestingly, in how it ties in with kind of our previous book club and our next book club, all written by the same author. They all loosely kind of follow the same characters. I mean, they do the same kind of progression. So we'll talk about how they tie in later on. Uh, its format is paperback and ebook, like most Halo Halo kind of books these days, and its length is only 36 pages. It's quite a short story in terms of short stories. Wouldn't you agree, Krista? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> Do any of you guys want to talk me through the synopsis? I mean, um, first of all, what formats did you guys read it in? I, re- I read it originally in ebook, and I read it again on my phone yesterday. Just to kind you of catch monster. Up. I know. It's not a real book for me. I like real books. We know, yes. Uh, my books are scattered on like different physical cities so like if i don't have it with me and i need it i'm just like okay I need the e-book. that's why i idea. appreciate the ebooks because i everywhere i go i have my kindle in my bag so i can just like drag it out and scour through and them if i don't have my kindle i have my the kindle app on my phone so i'm, I'm always another nice thing about kindles is you can make notes and stuff it's all and highlight I've never sections done that. It's quite handy. It's it's good for when you need to remember details and bits and pieces or you think you read something that's like it's going to be handy for a book club because I don't want to write in my real book. That's fully acceptable. I agree with your terms. I did this physical and then I recapped it for this with the audiobook. I was about to ask you, you're generally an audiobook guy. So uh, I'm an audiobook like? guy. It's it's pretty good like the I think the quality of the Halo audiobooks is pretty good these days. Um, they've gone away from funny you guys when you did the last book club and you were talking about Cold Protocol. Uh, Oren listened to the audiobook and he mentioned how in those older books when things would get like into a high action situation they'd have like music would come in onto the background and sort of try and up the tension which is a bit weird. Yeah, is You it? don't get that in any of the other books now. Oh, I think um, Oren said he actually kind of liked it. Kind of his mood setting. It feels like it's kind of trying to be like an audio drama then, but it's not really because there's no sound effects. If you're going to go okay. the audio drama route, go the whole way. Okay. When I'm listening to my book, I don't need like sort of slightly weird synthy techno because Captain Keys is doing something cool. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> well, I mean, if you really liked that feature and want to keep it going, you can always just play your own music on top of the book club. I could, but That's I don't know if it would necessarily weird. match up one for one. <laughs> It'd be funny though. It just seems weird to me. <laughs> so no, that's, that's fine. So, Krista, you're a real book. I'm an ebook, and Aaron is a mix of all three, more or less. Yes, I have a problem. He's the um, biggest who did the monster. Audio? Was it like one person, anyone in particular, or just a? a it's voice? one narrator for all of them, but I can't remember his oh, name. For fractures? I, okay. I believe it's the same guy that does all of them now. And if we hang on for a second, Scott. I should have got that detail. Sorry. Scott Brick, okay. I believe fair Scott enough. Brick does all of them now. Wow, fair play. It's not like uh, it's not like Evolutions. They don't have any like special guest voice actors. Okay, that's just what I was curious about. If there was anyone in there, we should know. Krista, do you want to take us through a quick synopsis of what happens in the story? Uh, sure. Dahlia lives in a crappy part of her planet. Her planet being... What is it? Sandholm? No, Sandholm's her... Her town. Yeah, the planet's Carol. Carol, Okay. On planet Caro, uh, Sandholm's just a shitty town in the middle of a desert. <laughs> so, generally shitty. And then she wakes up and things get even more shitty because everyone starts bleeding and dying. Yeah, it's a pretty grim intro. Uh, it's uh it's too, it's really nasty. It's nasty. I do I don't like weird virus thingies. 
I am fine with a bunch of blood and like bodily injuries in books, but weird weird viruses are just not for me. So it's kind of really it's almost like horror story esque where she wakes up and her whole town essentially is dead and she's just covered in blood. Quite a few yeah. of them are dead and she's just about alive, but her parents use the last of the medicine on her and stuff like that. So her like her fever broke. The local doctor's dead and all the adults of almost all importance are kinda dead. Pretty much. So Dahlia's like, Oh shit, I'm gotta go get some medicine and so she finds like the one other guy in the town who's okay, which is kind of her uncle, kind of not. Yeah. She recalls him her uncle. He's like, here, have a mongoose. <laughs> she goes out into the desert to find this Sangheili run town that has some human traders called uh, Moscow Oasis. Yep. Uh, it's generally a Sangheili city. Uh, the humans in the Sangheili kind of have a little bit of peace, but they're still not, they're not very friendly with each other. Peace is a loose term. That's yeah, the term if people haven't put two and two together yet, this is like the prequel to Halo Envoy, which is the book the book that comes we later which is know. set yeah you, they don't really tell you this at the time but because i don't think envoy was even announced when this came out so like we had this short story and as a standalone thing it didn't make a whole lot of impression to me because i didn't know at the time reading it a second time i started making connections with these characters they mention a few names and stuff because like they reference that and they talk about it later i think like the humans the live stars. on one side of a desert and the elites yeah. live on the other side. This was a human planet that was glassed, and then the elites claimed it as a colony, it and then wasn't the humans glassed. arrived. Was it? I thought it was no, a colony it wasn't. It was that like... was. And they alluded to a lot of like different politics going on in the Sangheili culture. Like some people like the humans and want to get along with them, and some people, the Thars, don't like humans at all and don't want to want them off of this planet so they can take control of it and that kind of comes to a head a little bit when dahlia gets to the oasis oh we wouldn't know we skipped the part uh she meets jat she shaves saves uh sang life named jat and they become so, he, he basically becomes her puppy he follows her around and protects her while she's like i want nothing to do with you kind of like chewbacca and han solo where she saves his life and now he's in like a life debt. Yeah, he has like a life debt and she doesn't want anything to do with him. Oh no, she still kind of freaks out about like... It's kind of cool that she just, she comes across them as he's about to get taken out. Like he's on the ground, he's about to be shot in the head. And, and then, then she, she distracts, distracts the, the other guy. guy and he cuts the other elite in half with an energy sword. But so I think cool. what's also interesting is that at the time she didn't know that that wasn't human. She was just yeah. saw a Sangheili standing over at somebody and going to kill it so she like stood up and shouted at him and then the thing he on the ground activated his sword and just skewered him yeah and it's kind of maybe important to say that like apparently all young adults in the halo universe she doesn't like the covenant or covenant races yeah she's no. been going from star system to star system as planets get glassed i think they mentioned in this that they used to live in a refugee camp on mars and then yeah that was interesting they moved back out into the outer systems to reclaim this planet i think oh didn't she come from Arcadia? I was about to say yeah. that her original planet's Arcadia and she had to flee it as that was being glassed. For the and second that's where time, they ended which up on Mars. I find kind of funny because she couldn't have been there for the first Arcadia fight from Halo Wars. She's too young. Yeah, she was too young for that. So she was, I think they said she was about five thereabouts when she left. And um, then she came to Carol, which is kind of weird where like the Sangheili, they didn't know they were going to be there. So when they came, they went to claim back an old city. Because what happened to this planet, Caro, is that it was more or less abandoned because it's just a desert planet. It's not very nice. But there's like one portion of it by a river that's actually really nice land. And they were going to go go there. And, but when they this particular colony ship arrived, they found or refugee ship, they found the Sangheili were already there and had built a city called Rack. So they were like, well, screw this. Then they had to, had to start their own crappy little town, as Chris says, called Sandholm. Which is just like, just sounds like huts, pretty much. It sounds pretty basic. But they live on the wrong side of the desert to the humans, so... And from the sounds of it, they're kind of poor because they don't have any... They had one radio transmitter and it's destroyed and this is why she has to go on this adventure because she can't radio for help from anyone. Pretty much. So she's trying to get pretty much medicine help for her parents, so... She's on the search for traders, isn't she? She knows that there's traders that yeah, come through the desert. Yeah, she knows that there's human traders that, are, that do that trade with the Sangheili. Jet, pretty much her... She has a mongoose that gets blown up and Jet essentially has a... Or Jat, sorry. He has a spectre with no turret. So she like, he pretty much gives her a lift. They become best friends straight away. And (laughs) 
Jet gives her Jet, sorry, gives her a lift to the Oasis. Where, as Krista mentioned, the different factions and politics kind of come into play here a little bit. It kind of comes to a head. They're fighting at this point. Yeah, she arrives at like literally the worst possible time to be at this oasis and be human. Or even to be elite, because I think it's... Maybe I got this wrong, but Certain it's the other of group of elites that take out everyone in the town with human weapons to make it look like humans attack the elites. Oh, yeah. They, they're they're doing a setup to make it look like the humans have attacked our village, so now you have to go and attack the humans. It's all very messy. It's very political. They're trying to... They're trying to... They're basically giving the Sanghili an excuse to go to war. The kind of the tensions you... That's really all it's hinted at. You learn a lot more in Envoy about what's going on. There's this guy. He's pretty much trying to incite a war again between the humans and um, the Sanghili. That's this guy named Thars, who's only actually mentioned in this book. You never actually get to see him. He comes really into play in Envoy as the kind of the big bad, as it were. Dahlia gets into town. She actually meets the traitors because the Sanghili in there kind of arrest her and throw her into this kind of prison where they have these two traitors, these two characters... And I can't really remember their names. One is Paul Delahomes or something like that. I can't remember what the woman's name was. So she explains her situation. Everything's awful. Oh no. But they can't help her. And they have no access to anything. And then pretty much the... I think they're, called, they're actually called death squads, I want to say. Of uh, elites and thingy league. Pretty much go building the building and start like murdering everyone with human weapons. A returning character saves the day. Jet. Jet, yay. Yay. He is... um. I don't know if they, they didn't say it yet, but he's pretty much like a spec op elite, right? He's pretty he's pretty badass, dude. Yeah, yeah. He has his active camouflage engaged, and he attacks the Sanghili that have come to kill the humans, and pretty much to to rescue um Dahlia again. And he pretty much they grab their weapons and go go on the run, and then the the, the two humans like split apart and run away because they're like okay. We, we know what we're doing. We're not going with you. We're going over here. Yeah, she. they do try to get her to come with them, but... She wants yeah, to Yeah, she's determined to get home. They jump in a specter and away they go. And then they get chased by the death squads, essentially. And they have a kind of pretty quick a chase scene. Fight. Yeah, a pretty quick chase scene. But it ends in a pretty kind of cool firefight where you get the... I get the pretty good impression. It's a pretty short story, right? Like we said. But, um... Dali is a very mature woman for I think she's actually 16 in this yeah, but she's, she's quite 16. mature with what she's doing and like the things she's undertaking Jat seems to have a lot of respect for her and a lot of patience I think as well she did su- nothing uh, but like diss him like the first t- like the first yeah, like half of this out. story until like the firefight at the end I kind of get the impression though that would probably I don't know I feel like that would be normal for elites I want to feel like elite children would be taught to stand up to everyone all the time you stand your ground you fight your case I have to imagine elite yeah. wouldn't get pissed off kind of like a human would with the shit yeah that's true well elites are very prideful and they find they find um they they like other creatures that are very prideful as well and dahlia is very i would say she's very prideful she's very no elites that's bad she's competent yeah i think he found he respected her in the fact you could see her age her inexperience and yet here she is with a mongoose armed in the middle of a desert saving his life and trying to save the life yeah, of her going to like the and... only elite village to get help when the yeah. elites don't really like them she's got exactly balls. knowing full well so she's like okay so anyway they're in the middle of this firefight and she has a plasma pistol and is essentially pitching in while jat has a plasma rifle or sorry focus 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 rifle I think it's a focus rifle. Yeah, he he snipes like quite a few people. Yeah, he starts kicking ass. You mean a beam rifle? The focus rifle's the shitty one from Reach. That is correct. It's a beam rifle because I remember how it's described, and it's like okay, yeah, it's it's a beam. Since he's capping heads, he's shooting drivers of specters, and they're crashing. He's doing all he's causing havoc essentially. I think he's an elite ranger. That's what I want to say. And he he basically teaches Dahlia the like choose choose the way you want to die. Yeah, don't don't run life. away don't, be don't about death. yeah just stand your ground and you know if you die you died with you know pride you did something i think she says something to him like but we're going to die and then he turns around and says but like you thought you were going to die earlier in the prison cell and here we are and you're still alive who knows what's yeah. going to come next just because you think we're going to die don't give up which is probably a useful life lesson in the halo universe well and the thing about this entire story is a lot of people have the bad impress- impression of saying Healy. We know that. But it's interesting to finally see a story where, you know, someone who has only bad experiences with saying Healy can 
overlook that fact and see them for the they're I mean Sanghealy are very human in in some ways. I mean they're very prideful and they have kind of different culture, but they're also, you know, they think, they feel they're relatable. They're relatable aliens. They are. They're they actually have a lot of common with humans and I think they're only coming to terms with that now in terms of the Halo lore wider universe. You get to see them kinda of interacting. Like this area is called the joint occupation zone. So like this really does come into play in Envoy and how important that is and what the purpose and just you have a planet with two cities in it, one human, one Sanghili, and they have to interact with each other to survive, more or they less. They have to trade. City. It's a pretty desperate planet that may involve ponchos. I'm just throwing it Uh-oh. out there. Uh-oh. Desert ponchos. Perhaps. Well, and also, like, these elites have nothing to do with, really, the Arbiter, so they don't have the kind of mentality the Arbiter does with humans. They do and they don't. Um, Have you read Envoy yet, Krista? No, I have not. Okay, there's a there's a lot of Arbiter talk in there. Oh, good. Uh, in goody. terms of like the UNSC are involved in Caro, and I think there's a bit of um, bit of the sort the sorts of thing Helios involved as well. But these people, these elites, are very independent in 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 that on those kind of terms. But they like that's the problem with Thars, and I'm we're kind of spoiling stuff for Envoy, so I won't get too into it. But he's trying to incite that again. Um, kind of break down all the kind of good work, let's say, that the Arbor has been doing with the UNSC in terms of brokering peace and stuff like that. So I guess we're, we're talking a lot of this, this book is quite short. It doesn't contain all that in it, but it just hints at it, which at the time when you were reading the book, if you didn't know anything about Envoy, it just didn't seem like there was much to this to this story in terms of like the greater lore impact, but there is a lot happening in the background, especially how, how it sets up the next book. What was say? Okay, so essentially we left the two characters are fighting for their lives, they're overwhelmed. Essentially it turns into a brawl. There's plasma swords everywhere. There's Jad is taking on about three elites, I think, at the same time. All yep. with swords. He's putting up a pretty good fight, I think, at the end. Dahlia is trying to help. Um, she pretty much gets taken out very quickly by an elite, as you can imagine. Surprise, surprise. Um Jat pretty much gets taken down. He gets uh, spared eventually, overwhelmed by numbers. And then, would you believe it, a pelican shows up and the elites just get slaughtered. They do. It's the two human traders because they're like informants for the human local government that's on Caro yes, on the, the city on the other mission. side of the desert. So they get the militia to come and rescue them. And then what I think is the saddest moment in this whole book. And it's totally. not super sad, but it's just so shitty. It's so sad. From everything that happened up to the book to that point, yep. to just what happens next, it's just like, oh man, who wants to, who wants to break the bad news? Jet dies. So like the the militia show up and just kind of kill all the elites and they don't differentiate between one elite or the other. And they find Jet still alive on the ground and he's like, oh, we have a live one. And just kills and she's him. like, no. And that's it. He's just gone. But he, I suppose, it seemed pretty ready to die anyway. I really think because... We kind of know that Dahlia kind of goes on to become, you know, a friend to the Sanghili. I think this is definitely when she realizes that, you know, some of the preconceptions that human ha- ha- humans have with Sanghili should be broken down a little bit because they're not all bad. No, she really does have a strong character arc in the story for as short as it is because where we leave her at the end is we'll pretty much the militia rescue her, pick her up and bring her home. Um, I don't know if they give her any kind of medical supplies. It's not really kind of hinted at. I think she does. She ends up saving the town, so I'm sure they give her something. I'm not sure how much of the town is left, as opposed to. I got the impression it was literally those three people: her two, her parents, and the old man that she left behind. I got the impression everyone else was dead. But I think didn't she say it was sorry? One of the houses there was movement in it, but no one came out when she shouted at them. Yeah, I think that was something. Trim Trawick Constant. There may be other survivors, but I think that the town only had about twenty twenty homes in it. Yeah, so it small. wasn't that big to begin with. So essentially, her father wakes up and notices a big change because she's standing over him, trying to help him. And she's in like full militia gear and has like a gun. She's like fully like her desert gear is there. She wears a gun all the time, and she's a her father like you bring around all the time. She's like, yeah, that's who I am now. She's just totally hardened, and she kind of quotes Jack to her father in terms of she will face with whatever comes, with whatever dignity she has. Do you know what I mean? She's ready. She's living the moment now. Um, I think this is building up to being an awesome character. She hasn't come into the world since. So I'd be... Um, maybe we're jumped ahead. So the only real tie into Envoy from this is kind of the world, the setting, the political kind of landscape. Dahlia and I don't think Sanholm really come, tries into it again. The, they do speak of her father, says something like, oh, hopefully the Envoy that is coming from the UNSC is... 
will help the tensions and that's pretty much all we get but this story kind of just ends there with Dahlia just being a pretty hard and much hardened person than she was before yeah like if this was a if this was a movie she'd be staring off watching the sunset over the dunes yeah and just thinking about like her friend dying be like I lost I my whole life has changed everything I've thought has been different I've lost so much but I've gained so much more it, the it is envoy will help da, da, da. to kind of read this again because I think we, we yeah we mocked the, like Halo teens I mean uh, the most recent Halo book that we read was it Retribution? Um, no it's the one on Onyx Legacy, Legacy of, of Onyx. Onyx we haven't done a book club on it but we have talked about it it has to do with um, a very similar character who has a similar story arc that she's a young uh, woman a human teen who watches her planet get glassed hates the Sangheili is forced onto Reach or sorry uh, Onyx is go to school Meets young Sangheili, young Ungai, and has to kind of interact with them. And eventually comes to fr- terms with them. Yeah, but it's very, very different than Dahlia. They're very different people, even if they're, they're startups and saying, but they have their initial reaction of dealing with aliens, of totally freaking out, not happy about the situation, have completely different story arcs. I think I'm slightly more interested in Dahlia's one than I was <laughs> in blanking on the main character for Jet's interaction. He's a, just. That's just a, such a cool more character than to have this young 16 year old girl in the middle of a desert dealing with a Sangheili elite spec ops ranger like you know. Bodyguard. Then, you know, he's he's kind of like the Terminator in this scenario. <laughs> he's there to look after John Connor and keep him alive. Yeah I think that I think this would have been a way cooler story if it was way bigger. If it was a 16 year old human girl with this massive Sangheili bodyguard. When they wrote, like, he, he wrote Envoy, I wonder, did this story come before Envoy, and did Envoy come out of it? And did someone decide maybe the situation on this planet was more interesting than this character? Because, like, I know a couple of these short stories have turned into longer things, and they've been, like, teases. But it makes me wonder, was the short story written, you know, here's an idea, and then someone in 343's gone, well, That's I like this planet on. idea, but, you know, we can leave this character behind. Because I, I would maybe. have maybe appreciated this character, but then it would have ended up maybe like, it might have ended up like Retribution, where suddenly you'd have Teen saving the day again. Yeah, yeah. And but I but wasn't anyway, I think that. they portrayed her fairly accurately. She didn't really save the day. I mean, she, she was. A no, well, she doesn't in this, most... but I'd imagine in a full book, you might fall into the trap of Teen Hero saves the day again. But like, I like this that it was just a small story and it's just about her and small goals she's not out to save the world she's just out to save her parents that's true and i think fracture was was good for that for short little stories little combined things i mean we um they're very good essentially for for that well and this kind of gives like a insight because one of the big plots right now in halo is humans and saying healy and they're hopefully peace soon and teaming up and being like we can't survive in this universe if we are enemies, we will just kill yeah. each other. But everything's still super new and super raw. Yeah, we're so sort of like, we're getting closer now. Difficult. Like, we don't have any covenant anymore. So, like, we're one step. Um, The only thing left, really, is the banished. But, like, I don't think the banished will necessarily stand between humans and elites. Well, and the becoming creator allies now. definitely going to give them a common enemy. Which always helps to bring, to bring factions together. together. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually didn't happen interestingly enough but legacy of onyx when there was like a third force it didn't bring the two opposing forces together it actually one saw it as an opportunity to gain the upper hand on the other Ooh. so there are cases where that won't happen um but as we know we have a solid kind of ally in the swords of Encelios and the arbiter but obviously the fictitious nature of a galaxy-wide empire is like huge uh, in terms of like how many different factions obviously splintered off yeah. yeah. So I'm curious if they give this the oh, what's the other short? What's the Firefly esque story? That's Smoke and Shadow. Smoke and Shadow. Well. If they gave this the Smoke and Shadow treatment and gave it like a longer ebook version, would you be keen on it? I think that's what an envoy is in terms. Of, well, I know Smoke Smoke and Shadow is essentially the first, let's say, third of the book that comes out later by Kelly Gay, which I'm totally blanking on. Uh, maybe actually that book was probably Spoken Shadow. What was the one in the... In the... It's like Ashes or something, isn't it? What's that again, Krista? In Fractures? In Fractures, there's the largest story in the book. Into the Fire. Into the Fire. Okay, yeah. yeah. In, Into the Fire is 
like the first third of Smoking Shadow. It's literally in that same book. It's just taken from Fractures and put in, and then she just carried on with the next set. Yeah. Like literally the next hour later, what happened in the story? I don't think that there's more. I think there is more to Dahlia, and I hope there is. But like her town and her area is so insignificant, really. I think this story was just setting up the political place of Caro and what's happening in order to bring in Envoy. I think I don't I don't know if anything else goes any further than there. Well, I feel like that Dahlia could eventually we could see her as like a one of the peace treaty people or you know a sympathizer, a Sengheli sympathizer who kind of, you know, speaks for them or something. I'll be looking for her in Envoy, but I I don't think she 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 has, uh, she shows up. I'm about to say this is her only appearance. <laughs> Maybe she got the disease and died. No, Krista. No, she, she survived. Her fever broke. She's alive. Oh. She's a winner, Krista. She doesn't bleed from her eyes anymore. Even with her singed shoulder. They should just make a <laughs> spin-off where Jet comes back as a ghost, and it's just my ghost, fr- my ghost elite. It's just her okay. <laughs> and her ghost friend <laughs> solving mysteries. <laughs> so kind of final-ish thoughts. Krista, this is your first time reading this, am I right? Yes, it is, and I haven't read Envoy. Yeah, so you have no real context uh, from this. So what did you think as a standalone thing? What was your kind of final thoughts on it? Uh, knowing that Envoy kind of talks more about this world and some of the characters, it definitely has more significance. I feel like if I didn't know that, this would just be like, uh, oh, that was cool. And then go on to the next story. Which is pretty much how I felt when I read it at the time. It's pretty identical to that. It's like, oh, interesting. And move on. I'm glad that there's not, not a lot of chapters in this. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Uh, Aaron, what did you think? Were you the same as me? I want to say you have read Envoy. Yeah, no, I've read Envoy. I couldn't remember the story before till I recapped it. I don't know why it just completely went out of my head for some reason. I, do, I remember some of the Fracture stories way more than others. I don't know why. I like It's a good story. I enjoy it. The characters are good. Like It's well written, and I think it's a credit to the author that none of his books that he's written so far for Halo are bad. Like They're some of my favourites. Nice one, Neil. Well, yeah, he does have the advantage of having the awesome great team. Well, that, well, that's very true. I like it, and I like that it's kind of... like I appreciate it's a nice small story, and I also get if you have more of it, then it's no longer a nice little self-contained thing, but I suppose mm. that's the sign of a good story, that it want, makes you want more at the end of it. Leave you want more. Yeah, I agree. So I guess that's kind of it for the... Uh, the book club today guys and um, thank you very much for listening to us we are podcast evolved go check us out on our website hello podcast evolved.com uh, it's pretty awesome right now it's pretty amazing as time is recording we've got two shows on the go so please go check them out with mission debrief which is uh, a talk about um various missions in halo as we play through them one at a time uh, we're starting with halo reach so we're working our way through that as we stand right now and um, we also have our usual uh, weekly show and every now and again we chime in with a bit of book clubs so um Thanks very much for listening. What do I need to uh, read next, David? <gasps> Thank you very much for interrupting me, Chris Brown. <laughs> Probably the best interruption you've ever done, Thank I want to say. The most constructive. Yeah. yeah what should that, I read next, David? He's very constructive. So, surprise, surprise, your next reading should be Halo Envoy. Yes. Because Halo Envoy leads directly from this story, as we've mentioned numerous times in the book club. So, that's our next one. Our exact date of recording for that book club is not in it'll be april end of april ish yeah so that's a far larger book with kind of large there's a lot of stuff going on in that book um i kind of liked it a lot it um reintroduces great team everyone got super hyped when that book was announced because you know great, great team, team. awesome <laughs> and great. it leads on from it's kind of weird where like it ties into the story and leads off comes back in from the cold protocol where which where we left great team going off on some super special mission her great team have a lot of shit going on yeah they're super interesting and they're really really interesting i think that's kind of it guys tune in next week uh for our next recording and that's everything i got for you guys uh, evolved evolved, evolved. <laughs>